Hi and welcome to Greenfly Gamer and on this episode we're just going to look at uh, collecting for what you like. So here we're going to look at a few little things, collecting for what you like. Um, I as a collector, um, I'm pretty small time right now, uh, I only have a few hundred games and most of those games I like to collect because I like to play those games. Now, as a, if you're going to start off as a collector, um, just a small little thing, please just collect what you like. Now, what I think of uh, collecting what you like, choose a system. Now, as a collector, you tend to start collecting all the systems. And when I'm looking at these systems from the NES, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, or Genesis, uh, N64, uh, all the big cartridge based games, so you go to the Ataris, if you really want to go that far back. Now, I like collecting for the N64, because that was one of the first uh, systems I bought personally. I had a Super Nintendo before, um, but I really like the N64 because that's what it meant the most to me. So, uh, at the moment, uh, that's what I tend to gravitate more to. Uh, my Super Nintendo collection is a wee little small. So, um, yeah, so basically I'm saying I'm going to collect for what you like and choose a system at the start just to yeah, get the bug. Um, so, yeah, at the moment being, uh, I bought myself a N64 and I've got quite a few good games for it now. Um, when collecting on these games, uh, try and you know, collect a genre you enjoy. Um, otherwise, you end up collecting these games and they just sit on a shelf or sit in a box somewhere and you just you never play them so uh, on the N64 of course I think that was the platform that uh, the 3D platformer really came about so of course you know I've got my Banjo-Kazooie, your Donkey Kong um, you also uh, of course Mario um, 64 so yeah you choose a genre that you really enjoy playing um, the N64 wasn't very good for beat-em-ups uh, so you turn out, yeah, it was, I never, there weren't very many good beat-em-ups on that system. Uh, of course, racing was another good uh, on that system, because um, the power and everything of the N64. It really, um, yeah, there were some really good um, racing games on that system. So, when you go back into the next, uh, if you go on the uh, Super Nintendo, there, I liked, uh, you got your RPGs, everybody loved those. Um, and there was a couple of good uh, 2D beat em ups on there. Um, yeah, so really collect for a system you enjoy collecting for. Uh, I got my N64 and I really enjoy collecting for the Dreamcast as well because there are some really crazy little games on there that I really enjoy. Um, and when you come out of that, uh, you choose, uh, say, you want to do genre of games that you like to collect for. So, um, yep. Another pitfall I come across collecting now, I'm thinking I'm, I'm a little guilty of it now, um, is when I see a game and I pick it up and I check how much it's worth. Um, I go online, uh, the price checker guide, and if, again, I won't pick up a game if I'm spending too much money on it. Now, it truly just makes good financial sense, but uh, I, I tend to put games down that um, say they're it's worth only five dollars and they want eight dollars for it. Um, I tend I look at it and go, uh, but then I also go look. Am I going to play that game? And a lot of the time I'll go eh, no. <laughs> so I, I end up putting them down. So looking at uh, the the money and the worth of the game. Now of course if I saw um, you know Earthbound on a you know drink. Oh, sorry, go yard sale, and they only wanted ten bucks. Of course, I'm going to pick it up. Uh, if they wanted fifty bucks, of course, I'm going to pick it up because I know full well the game's worth one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, boxed, I think I don't know what it's worth loose, uh, but yeah, it's one of those. It's also one of the better games on the uh, Super Nintendo. So it's another reason why you, uh, you kind of you kind of keep an eye on what the prices are doing. Um, uh, again, I always try and have a good idea. Um, I don't want to be overpaying for uh, uh, games out there or even systems. Um, 
at the moment I'm sort of in the market for a virtual boy um, and those prices I'm trying to get it with a few games I know the games aren't that expensive um, just to buy on their own but uh, the, the end of it, for some reason I'm on a virtual boy and I'm looking at it on eBay and other places and at the moment I'm kind of yeah wondering if I'm gonna spend I saw them go for two hundred dollars. I've seen them go for seventy dollars. It's it's such a big fluctuating market uh, on that system. So uh, I'm just paying my time, biding my time for it, and uh, see if I can one day I'll just uh, randomly go. Oh, there's one, and I pick it up. Um, so yeah, so monetary ver worth. Yeah, you keep an eye on it, but some don't try and let it rule what you're getting. I mean if there's a game you really want and they want a couple extra dollars more you gotta think uh, a couple extra dollars for hours of entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's how you, how I like to measure games worth to me. Uh, it's how many hours I'm gonna end up playing that, uh, that particular game. Um, so it's always good and for what I remember of it. So, at the end of it, um, I'd like to just a quick little point out, so just run down. So you want to collect for what you enjoy. Now, I see these other big YouTube collectors um, that uh, um, do a lot of uh, YouTubes. So, I look at it and they, they collect everything. When they're pickups, uh, videos that they do, they've just got everything. Um, yeah, they've got, uh, I've got the limited collection. I mean, I look at it and go, how many hours in a day do these guys actually dedicate to playing games? Um, some of them are really busy with their YouTube, uh, putting out two, three videos every week. Yeah, I'm only doing one uh, a week, so and that's still quite busy for me because of my life. Um, and I look at it, it's like, oh, they, oh, they picked up 40 odd games uh, this month for the last uh, couple of months. I'm thinking, yeah, they're not just collecting for the sake of collecting. Yeah, um, I see them look at this and they go, oh, I've got this limited collection and I know full well, they're not going to bloody well play it. They may play it for five minutes and they've got to put it down because they just don't have the time. So when you're collecting, uh, when you get to a good size collection, I must admit, even at my couple of hundred games, even I don't have the time to play them. You know, um, I may play games for an hour or two at a time if I'm lucky. So when collecting, you know, you, you get past, I think there's a point in, in a collector's life that he gets past the point where he collects uh, for getting the game because he wants it. He now gets into the point where he's collecting because he's a collector. So, which I think is a, every collector is going to go through. Um, they're going to get past the point of actually in, when they, they enjoy collecting it but they're not getting it because they want it uh, in the sense of wanting to play the game they just want it to put in their collection they want that complete N64 North American release um, you know, uh, game stack, uh, N64 and Super Nintendo, Dreamcast they just want the full collection um, which I must admit I want to get there too one day uh, if I can ever get there but uh, yeah I think the people get clouded by um, uh, just collecting for the sake of collecting. So, if you like my videos, um, please uh, put a like. And if you really like to see what a few other things I've done, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm trying to get a video out every week, so please uh, stay tuned for any more that I can uh, put out.